So, hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope we're all having a great weekend wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. This is 50 Pips Rocking and Rolling, 4th of November 2018. No trade calls or recommendations, we're responsible for their own stuff. We're here for educational purpose only. So, what's happening? We're going into a potentially interesting week. Tricky one to call because a lot of stuff is going on. So, we're going to stick to our charts and our view um, so far and just and just update. So, it's not really a week when we've got that much uh, new stuff going on. It's just a uh, continuation and seeing if some of the moves stick. So US time change done and dusted. We've got elections, RBA, RBNZ, FOMC. Uh, so it should be an interesting week. Uh, we really can't uh, complain in terms of the moves, in terms of the trades, in terms of the setup, we can't. And uh, really neither can President Trump as we go into the the midterms here. As we all know, as we've been discussing in detail, he owns the market and uh, and uh, he pretty much needed three things as usual. No big surprise. Stocks up, market got saved, uh, crude down, and dollar down. So all things check, 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 right? Everything, uh, everything in line. So let's see how these things hold through midterms. I mean, in terms of uh, the major thing we've been beating a drum about, and I, you know, I've been going on about it in, in the sessions. We've been talking about this a lot. I keep on posting that on Twitter saying, if you're not paying to USDCNH, you really aren't paying attention. And again, it's key because that's really what drove a lot of the moves. And as usual, you know, we like to keep those things into context, especially as we said, when you go into month end flows and, uh, on, and on top of it, you have these tricky moves, you have to be very, very careful. There's not an awful lot of edge trading tight intraday, but what these month end flows, especially where the bigger moves are opening up, they allow you to try and get back into some bigger structural positions, some position trades on the charts where the technicals are really uh, in your favor, right? So in terms of uh, USDCNH, again, we're gonna keep on going on about this, right? Because as we said, what are the chances that the Chinese are gonna wanna see this go cocaine angel through the seven mark as uh, as the uh, Trump Xi meeting is approaching, not very high, right? So all things being equal, our base case was that as everybody, you know, as usual, it's always the same movie. Kept on going. Oh, Yuan's going to go higher, higher, higher. It's going to break above this as we approach the meeting. Probably not, right? So the best case was at the very least that we're going to try and spoil the party and 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 get rid of all these people that are trying to trade tight. But most likely, our base case expectation was that we come all the way back down, possibly into the bottom end of this range, but essentially that we would fit and sit comfortably here until it, unless a huge piece of news came in. And to us, that makes sense, right? Because also in terms of the Chinese, it means that it's not high enough to cause havoc, but it's still high enough to be able to ramp it higher if you want to, right? And it's sitting in a comfortable range. So that pretty much played out uh, very, very nicely. Uh, we also talked about the fact that everybody was, uh, was getting long, uh, uh, expecting the golden goose to continue to lay those eggs. And as we're going into Apple, we said, you know, you have to consider what if, right? What if Apple disappoints, right? And and, and as far as we've been discussing, you know, this market broke on those uh, a while back on the Netflix earnings, and we've been seeing all these negative surprises, you know, across the board, you know, you have to pay attention, right? So our base case was that the surprise would clearly be that Apple was going to do something, you know, report a miss or do something and we'd get a negative surprise and everybody would panic. And that's exa exactly what happened, right? And, and keep in mind that Apple still has an awful lot to catch up with in terms of the correction we've seen uh, on, the, on the other big tech names. But surprise, surprise, right in the middle of the night, we got that announcement and, you know, we saved the world. So we'll have to see. But for now, you know, we still view this, uh, the price action on Apple and this move on Apple as very bearish and systematic. And again, highlighting the fact that there is something fundamentally broken in, 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 in tech and these growth stocks and that something has to reprice and we haven't really repriced enough. Now, the other thing to keep in mind, again, are those pivotal numbers. Um, very, very interesting action intraday around those pivotal numbers. Actually, even if you look at the uh, um, at the S&P on a, on, on a shorter time frame or something like the daily, you can see how pure the move was when we came right back into it here. You know, we, we, we were 
moving lower we came right back into our pivotal number failed and this is pretty much played out across the board and then we went down for the kill into those new lows then we got the little bit of panic and then we had the you know save the day news overnight ramp buck up but got smacked down as soon as it was denied and essentially here if you see a lot of people were probably looking at something like this with the market trying to coil and expecting it to break higher but you see as soon as the um, denial came on the news that there was really nothing bam it just broke right back and where is it pinned it's pinned right at surprise surprise the pivotal number so those pivotal numbers continue to be key across the board and what's interesting is to, again to show you that you know markets have a funny way of playing out in a certain way look at where we stalled at the end of the week right so I'm putting in the the fibs on the uh, on the um, on the ES on the Nasdaq it's a little bit lower I mean I'm not drawing them perfectly but just to give you an idea on the uh, on the Russell and on the Dow and surprise surprise even though we had a choppy tape with those headlines coming out where did we stall essentially the 50 back and the 200 DMA was protected the 50 back and the 200 DMA was protected the 50 back and an attempt to protect the 200 DMA on the on the YM and the Russell surprise surprise that was the leader remember we had all those charts we'd been showing the Russell against all the other indices against that it was leading you have to pay attention to when the Russell leads so far even though it rallied quite nicely and it stayed bid towards the end of the week it's still far off that 200 and that 50 so again we'd still suspect suspect that we need to probe the downside that these lows are not going to stick as strong lows and that the only way we'd really start to question this if uh, the other indices get a bit above that 200 and the Russell joins in and starts to, to to hold back above that 200 right so again there's um, there are a lot of interesting things uh, going on this week and and we'll have to you know we'll have to be um, ready in terms of the dollar and again just to highlight those moves you see we were stuck here and we kept on talking again we kept on banging the drum about it's about the weekly close it's about the weekly close we really couldn't care less about the monthly it's about the weekly why it's simply because of where the monthly closed with respect to the week and we had that monthly close but it was right through those month end flows and we wanted to see how the market settled post those month end flows right and if you see it on the weekly essentially that's uh, you know it looked very very bid at one point and then it got a smackdown now it's not a, a crazy failure uh, as far as we're concerned this is still a broader chop zone and we'll have to see next week how this trades uh, one way or the other but again unless we get sustained and strong breaks above this 98 or below this 9260s we still expect it to be very very choppy and as we uh, detailed in that specific long I think it was an 18 20 minute video on the dollar and the bigger structural moves to the long, you know long side short side etc cetera, etc cetera, nothing has changed so we're still stuck here but again um, those month and flows offered beautiful opportunities especially on Aussie and Kiwi right you saw how euro kept on getting smacked very very strongly and we discussed this in detail in the weeklies too right kept on getting smacked into the month end in those last days and the difference was that uh, you know a lot of the other also the yen caught a bit but the, the difference was on the Aussie and Kiwi right so what happened here is we put in that reversal candle ahead of time and all the and despite that on the month end flows we never even went back down to test that so that's offering an awesome little opportunity to get long off that base to pay for at the very least a move into the first level right and if you, the easiest way is again just to look at it in terms of those uh, moving averages the 50 the the 100 and the 200 again we don't specifically trade them it's just good to uh, give you an idea what's going on so here going into the week is this move going to stick right is the move on the DXY going to stick you know are we going to move back down and is this previous resistance is this moving average going to act as support for continuation and final move of where we're expecting in terms of primary move into the 73s even though the 200 is clearly uh, uh, 
a potential move, right? And exactly the same kind of action on, uh, on Kiwi, right? Where similar month end flows were coming in, but at no point did it test the reversal candle, the trigger, the, the, the trigger candle for this move. So back done, is the 50 gonna hold for the bigger retracement? To continue to try and make its way higher and we'll know because we've got you know that rb and z and the rba coming in this week even though probably the rba is going to be a lot more interesting in terms of um of meeting right in terms of the euro just remember and this is an, an important one to keep an eye out for because uh, again this week is going to open we got a lot of headline risk we've got all the over weekend moves uh, or discussion on um uh on uh on, on brexit we'll have to see what happens there but essentially essentially on uh iran news you know crude be funky essentially what's important on on the euro is especially as we're going through those lows is when you had this smackdown all the way into the end of the month all things being equal we're closing here and we go into the overnight session you would expect that it's going to be very, very easy. You would expect that it's like taking candy from children to take out that round number at that 113 level. And the fact that it isn't, and we had such an aggressive reversal here, you have to pay attention, right? You have to pay attention. So clearly here, it's all about how we ended up reversing on the week. And our favorite uh, way of looking at this surprise surprise is exactly the same way we're looking at the DXY is on the weekly right and we're looking at these moving averages as being the chop zone right you've got the 50 to the upside and the 200 to the downside this is on a weekly and as long as we stay in here it's much to do about nothing we get a um, weekly close above or a weekly close below then the you know we could get some real traction but right here we still favor playing the range and as long as this low holds from a closing basis we're still expecting it to try and continue to rotate higher or at least to stay into inside this chop zone uh, a lot of people were asking about um gold and again on gold nothing much has changed i wish it had but it's the same thing it's rotating higher and uh, our base case is that this is ultimately going to trade towards that 200, towards the 1300. We would not be surprised if we see some kind of a drive-by shooting back into the 1200, but we still expect this area to hold from a closing basis. And as we said, the biggest sucker play in our view after we had um, this candle here, was to it's the same way everybody's getting long dxy the highs or all the everybody getting long uh, uh crude in the 70s for the 100 is to try trying to get long here because we expect that this level to be defended with gusto and we think that either you're you know you're positioned long and there's no real reason to to cut as some of our trades are but here either you're waiting for a move lower or you know we expect to see the market to try and defend this right so there may be some tactical shorts to be had here now if we start to press back above this uh 138 1 uh 1238 1250 we expect the potential breakout to be very aggressive and that is one of the few times where we would consider um uh trading uh breakouts outside of the 1250 for the impulsive move back into the 200 into the 1300 but we'll have to see how that um how that develops and uh, and what the context is going to be in terms of the uh, zbs again uh, nothing much has changed the way we're focused on and we're looking at this is still on the monthly so you see how in in a sloppy way shape or form it's trying to hold even though it's heavy as long as we don't take out these lows very very aggressively and close below we still think that it's very very choppy and it may need to t probe a little bit more to the upside that's probably this is probably going to be one of the key tells through midterms one of the most interesting charts to keep an eye out for but needless to say again if it can't catch a bit and it can't base here then very very ugly and we're still looking for a move back into that 200 but the possibility here, especially depending on what the market do, is that if we can stabilize a little bit, is that we get a, a decent bounce potentially up into the 145s, but the downside, that remains intact, right? Um, what else have we got? Um, 
I think that's pretty much most of the things uh, we were looking at. Crude, okay, CL. And we'll have to see what's, what's happening now. Things are really heating up. You got a lot of head fl uh, news flow with Iran over the weekend. And um, we'll have to see. But again, we're back on a monthly here. We'd expect this to be broader chop zone. Um, as we discussed, you know, the other sucker play, as far as we're concerned, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, was uh, getting long of that 200. Uh, sorry, in that 100 on the monthly, we were looking for shorts in that. And uh, we covered far too early the first partials. This has just gone down. This is just clearly huge liquidation. And you can see it, you know, long's just puking this out. There's no bounce, you know. And as we discussed, if you remember, those of you who are in the weekly, the other big sucker, uh, sucker trade was to try and get long on a Friday, right? Because, you know, all the junior traders, all the guys... Uh, Amateurs are coming into this thinking, oh, I've heard never get uh, short crude on, uh, on a Friday, blah, 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 blah. And they were all trying to pile in getting long here uh, into the Friday with tight stops. And we said, you know, you have to understand, even though those, those sayings tend to hold true eight times, nine times out of 10, there's times where the context is very different. And the context here is that we, it's just pure liquidation from the long side and the short, it's just people are getting out any price, right? And the, the longs are getting killed. So here, no surprise that we broke through those lows. Now the open's gonna be very, very key here, but it's just, you know, it, it's very, very heavy. And unless the news flow supports here, even on any bounce, you know, it looks like it's going to try and come back all the way back down into those low 50s. Now, remember what we discussed, especially if you're looking at this from a weekly perspective. And again, this is all just looking at the technicals because the news flow uh, can really, really change this. But this is the level you really want to watch, right? Because if it's going to bounce, technically, if it's going to bounce, especially on this break here, this is the natural place we would expect it to try and, and, <clears throat> and bounce, right? All this huge previous resistance zone, uh, previous uh, support, previous resistance. We've got the 100 coming in here on the weekly, the 100 week moving average. This has been in free fall. You know, it's, it's clearly liquidation. It's not a very healthy move, but it, it's not a very natural move either, right? You know, four weeks just so if anything, this is a place Again, also depends what the news flow does and going into, but this, if it's going to bounce, this is where you'd expect it to bounce. If it doesn't, then we would expect that move back into the 50s to come very, very quick and it to be extremely ugly. Now, um, uh, what else have we got? Uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Again, we'll have to see how all these things open up, but um, especially on, actually, let's just do, uh, oh, yeah, something uh, that popped in on my feed, which is really interesting. I, I hadn't seen this. I don't really follow it. Look at this. If you look at the value line geometric index here, look at this. Try this on for size. As they say, watch where, we're tra where we trade. The correction back down. Look at this. Draw a little line to the left and look at this. I mean, this is pretty, you know, look where we are. That is massive, right? Back all the way July 207. So essentially, right, on that puke lower, this is just flat, it's just gone nowhere, right? It's just gone nowhere. All this, all the pain and suffering recovered all the way up to break highs and then we just let it all go and we're essentially gone back to unchanged to where we were in July. Pretty impressive, right? I mean, just, just something that got retweeted into my feed and, uh, and it's pretty impressive. I mean, again, that doesn't mean that much because this is just still be, you know, rotating higher. This is just a correction and this could end up going completely crazy. But just in terms of context, in terms of what we've been discussing, in terms of how much damage was done in October, and in terms, especially in terms of the velocity of the move, uh, it was uh, you know pretty pretty much a lot of damage. And again, the last chart just to um, get back on this because um, it's always interesting. One of the <clears throat> main charts is if you look at SPX, right? Just to put this into a little bit of context again, where are we and what's going on? We're pretty much stuck at mid range, right? We're pretty much stuck at mid range, 
And we believe that unless we get something really incredible happening in terms of the news flow, our base case is that the top is in for the year again. We would not be surprised to see it continuing to trade inside this range for the end of the year. But if we were going to break, we would uh, be less surprised or we, would, we wouldn't we would be surprised if anything happens because we're never surprised. But we would uh, expect the break to be more to the downside than to the upside, if anything. But again, here, remember, this could easily, easily bounce very, very aggressively in um, into the midterms or post the midterms, even all the way back to the top of this range. But that doesn't change the, the fact that the damage is done. Just be careful this week, especially if we get news um, when we trade on Tuesday in the overnight session, because markets can be fairly thin so you can get silly moves the focus here in terms for those of you writing in about the bigger question picture is still this broader range it's still this broader range but we're going to maintain what we said speed velocity context and how this move came about we would expect this not to be a multi-year structural low uh, even though a lot of people think that this is the by the dip done and dusted and we're heading off to the santa claus rally to new highs we don't believe that's the case for now uh we could be wrong we've been wrong before we'll be wrong again but our experience and the way we look at the charts makes us think that this is far more solid than this okay guys have an awesome one talk to you guys soon bye bye thanks for sharing thanks for liking everybody as always very much appreciated